There are actually 14 AI tools built within Power BI if you include machine learning algorithms as well. And that can be broken down into AI transformations and Power Query from detecting image to languages, sentiment analysis and key phrase extraction, or AI visuals, key influences, Q&A, decomposition tree, or the brand new smart narratives. Whether you're looking to right click and get answers like summarize, see whether distribution is different or explain the increase decrease, or also just general within the UI, like getting quick insights when you publish to web, column from examples, clustering different columns and anomaly detection, which just got released. If you like this video, then please feel free to click the like button because I have plenty more videos coming out on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, anything and everything. So let's first do the language. So I'm going to select this text and use text analytics here. So it might take a while to load, but eventually you get these three options. We will explore all of them. Um, I have a Power BI premium per user, so I'll show you how to sign up for free for the public preview in a second, but let's see what it yields. So I'm going to go detect language and then this is the column that I want. Press OK. And now it's done that. So it's actually created a column called detected language and then just the two letters the ISO code. Uh, notice it added a new step in Power Query and it created this function in my queries pane. I'm going to add a column and a conditional column. I'm going to say if, let's just do the ISO code equals column, the abbreviation then same, otherwise different. And this is test language. Press OK. There we go. And now they're all the same. So I know that that is a success. Next, we're going to look at the vision AI insights, which are able to detect what is in these images. You do need to start with a valid URL for an image. And let's see what that yields. So here you have the loaded screen again. I've gone premium per user here. I'm going to click on tag images. It asks me which column to do. I can change that. And this is for more uh, options if I want to change the language, but I'll just press OK. And now it has returned again a function and a new step there. Notice though that I have increased the number of rows. So if I go back to this step, I had 11 rows and then it increases to 75 rows. And that is because each row has multiple things in it. So what's it added? So it's added a few things here. So the tags, um, the same thing in JSON formats, and then each tag one by one is a row in itself. And as well as the tag, I've also got the image confidence level of each one. And then here, if there's any errors, it will say null. For me, I've just got no errors. So here we are with the data loaded in Power BI. I'm going to get the image link in a table and I'm going to put that alongside the tag and the confidence level. The image by default doesn't show, but if I click on image link and then go to column tools and data category, make this an image URL, then it should show me an image. So outdoors, yeah, one, snow, sky, sure, cat. It's pretty sure about that. This might be a llama, it might be staring. This is pretty low in the distance. Uh, canyon, It's this is about midway through the point. And sloth looks like this. Here I have some data where we're going to look at some sentiment analysis and keyword extraction. So here I have a comments column. I'm going to click on that and choose text analytics. In this case, I'm going to score sentiment, keep this as is and press OK. And there you go. Now it's given a rating between zero and one, where one means that it's a very positive sentiment. Zero means it's a very negative sentiment and 0.5 means it's somewhere in the middle based on the phrase that's in there. So let's have a quick look. So this is 0 0.83 and here's the comment is, no, it is too big. I'm quite happy. So they are saying they're happy. This is completely neutral. And it says house correspondence dinner was last night. Obama goes standing ovation. I think that's quite positive. This one is quite negative. Best athlete of our generation, if not all time. I don't want to get into debates about that. So it's saying that they're quite a good athlete, but they don't want to get into a uh, debate about it. That's not necessarily the best response, but it looks for words like not, and it gives you answers based on that. This is a very low one. Can't sleep. My tooth is aching. 
Fair enough. <laughs> this time, let's go for a key phrase analysis. Just press OK with the defaults. And then it's drawn it out. Notice how it has taken two columns, one for key phrases separated with a comma and one with just words, but it has gone into more rows. So the previous one had 480 rows and now it's gone into over 999. So every single entry has now become multiple things. Sometimes data in Power Query is not very well put out. So this is a date column and I've got Mun, May 11, and then 2009 all the way over here with a time in between. But I want to extract that and I'm gonna use a machine learning tool called Column for Examples to do that. So you can select your column and go Column for Examples from selection, 11th of May, 2009. You've gotta sometimes give it a little bit more. So let's go to somewhere where it's different. So this is 17th of May, 2009. And there you go. Now it's given me that there based on the dates. So this is the date. Press OK. Next, we're going to use the sentiment analysis thing that we made because it's all very well and good like these exact numbers, but we want things to be clustered together. So to do that, first, I'm going to transform and multiply this by 100. And next, I'm going to go to add column again and from selection. And here I'm going to say this is between 75 to 100 and then look at that it bands them according to these number bands which is pretty nice so give it a name that this is sentiment bands and there you go that's the formula you need okay and then we can do some more interesting analysis i can press close and load and when i'm in power bi i can just make some data from this so i can for example look at location and see what the score sentiment is like that. I don't want to sum. I want to make that an average. I could, of course, make the measures. And then, for example, I can take the sentiment bands and I can look at, for example, this, but I can make this into a count like that. So how many are in each block, which is quite interesting. And then you can use all your filters as you normally would. Power BI is just launching a new type of license called premium per user. And for the moment, at the time of making this video, it is still in pre-launch, which means that anyone can sign up. All you have to do is go to this site and click on this form. I'll put the link to this in the description below. And then it says that you have initially 60 days, but they may be self-renewed for every 60 days until the public preview is concluded, which could take a while. We don't know at this stage what the price will be for premium per user, but sign up for free for now whilst you can. So the next one we're looking at is anomaly detection, brand, brand new. So this allows you to identify which anomalies are happening and why they might be happening. So it only works at the time of writing with dates, so time series information and numerical fields. Here you can use this. I love this new Zoom slider feature that just came out. And it has to come from a date column that's properly formatted as a date, um, generally using markers date table. So once you've got all that set up, click on this, the analytics pane, and choose find anomalies. This pane was uh, really good at the beginning, but they didn't add too much recently. So what it's done is it's got a gray outline as to where your data should fall based on this sensitivity. If I bring the sensitivity down, then I click apply and it gives me a much bigger range with fewer anomalies. But if I do it the other way, then it does the opposite effect and finds more anomalies. 70% is the default, so let's go with that. Then what you can do is you can find out what the explanation is. So in explain by, you can just put in a bunch of different fields, which I have done for this one. Make sure you click apply when you're finished. And then if you choose one of them, it will pop, do this pop up and it will tell you what causes the anomalies. So is male is no, so i.e. it's female. There is a 50% chance of that. And these are much, much smaller chance, but it actually shows you the data for just Spain and the data overall as well. 
Uh, it does also come up with this narrative for you on the date and the value and what the expected range is. You can also change options like the shape, the size of it, and the colors, etc. To make sure that you have it, you need to enable preview features. So click File, Options and Settings, Options. Go to Preview Features and make sure it is ticked there. Next, we have a couple of things that are embedded in right-click. So here, I can right-click here and say, Analyze, Explain the Decrease. And then you use this AI to assess what it is. Uh, it gives it to you in a choice of charts. So here might be, for example, the month that it went down in versus up. So waterfall charts are really good for explaining that. They show the increase and the decrease. If you don't like waterfall charts, you can choose from a scatter plot or this sort of bar chart. I don't like this one, particularly for those multitude or this ribbon chart, which I like if there's a smaller number of categories. So you can go through and say like, by voted, yes, went up a little bit, but no went down a lot. So if you like what you see, you can just add it to the visuals pane like that. The other one you can do is sort of on this bar chart where you can say, analyze, explain where this distribution is different. Here are the filters that cause it. So here it can say, no has, for has pets, has this percent of records, yes has that. And this is how it's showing it across the country you can choose which one you want to see like that. And again, like the other one, you can decide if you want to add the chart, if it's useful or not. Comparing proportions, it will put two axes, the left and the right. Uh, if you take it off, it just keeps you with the left like that and only compares absolute values. Another right-click option is you can click on a chart, right-click and choose Summarize. This is brand new, also a preview feature that you need to switch on. It uses artificial intelligence to come up with this narrative, and it does actually respond to filters. So if I click on that, these numbers are changing. Anything that's highlighted or underlined is changing. If you don't like one of the sentences, you can just sort of backspace it, and then you can even add your own. You could say, for example, total sales were, and then you can add a value. It uses the Q&A thing, so you can say total sales, and then it will add that together. You can name it and change the formatting as you need to as well. Press save. And again, it does respond based on what you do. The other way that you can use this smart narratives is in the visuals pane. You can just click on this and it will create a the same idea but for the entire page. So it will summarize everything for the entire page. Again, you have the same way that you can interact with it. And if you filter things, then that does flow through to the narratives as well. It even gives you different narratives. The third way you can do it is if you just insert a text box. So now inserting a text box will actually allow you to add values and review existing values based on the smart narratives technology. You also have three different AI visuals. So this is the key influencers visual. So here I can say, well, influencers married to be no, i.e. they're single. And then it says when, this is the phrase, the likelihood of being married increases by whatever. So if they have pets, then they're more likely to be single. And that increases by 1.49 times. If it says infinity, that means that there's no data for the contrary. And you can choose this choose only ones that are influencers and have it above the line. It also has key top segments where it has the population count here and you can get more information there. Learn more about this segment. This could give you a similar thing to find where distribution is different. You also have a Q&A visual and here you can just type in something. A few things that have changed recently. So you can say, for example, sales minus profit and it can do an arithmetic calculation. You can say how you want it to show and then in a chart type. And then where it doesn't detect something, it will give you this, but you can say it there like that. I do have another video where I talk about these three visuals in a lot more detail. You can do a lot of things. So let me do another one from scratch. You could just choose some of these. So for example, maximum profit, or you could just say profit by year 
and by country. And then we'll give you that. Uh, you can also say top two countries by sales in 2019 and give it some filters as well. When you like what you see, you can just click on this and this will turn this into a standard visual. The last one is the decomposition tree. And here you can say what you want to see, for example, profit, and you can have lots and lots of values in there and see how it's broken down. So if I look at by country, it shows me what the distribution is. And then you can add and choose the high value or the low value, and it will give you various things like that. This is the date as it's showing. These are negative values that it's showing this way. You can customize all of these visuals. And I do have another video that I made that goes into them in more detail. So that's key influences, decomposition tree, and Q&A visual over here. Another one is clustering. This works in both a scatter chart and in a, a table, as long as you have two different numerical columns. So if you click on something and you choose this one, automatically find clusters, just press OK. There you go. It will load this and put them in clusters. And same with a scatter chart. So here in a scatter chart, it also colors them differently. Clustering is a statistical method that groups things, as you can see here, it, they are grouped. It's the same data, so it would give me the same way of clustering them. Let's look at Power BI's insights. So I'm going to publish this to, say, my workspace. Then when it's done, I can get this and I can click Get Quick Insights. And after it's loaded up on the Power BI service, it gives you a lot of these things. So for example, there's a correlation between sales and profit for the clusters that I made earlier. That's not really surprising. Some of these are not very useful, but it's good to just have a quick look and see if there's anything that is useful from there. So if you enjoyed that video, then I've got plenty more like it, including another one that digs deeper into the three AI visuals. But so if you like this video, then I've got plenty more like it. Feel free to give me a like, write a comment down below, and also hit the subscribe button for more videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoints, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, etc. Thanks for watching.